This training video is on the use of the conversion button found on audio switch. It appears in two places, up here at the top and then down here in the lower right hand side. And when you click this button, it starts the conversion of files that you have added to the audio switch and user interface. And if we go ahead and do that, let's take a look at a couple of things that happen. First of all, you can see the screen becomes grayed out as it's processing. And as it's processing, you can see the files that it's finished and those that it's working on based upon this coloring of the files here. Another thing that you should notice is down here, there's a progress indicator in which it shows us that we're working on file 4 of 123. And it shows you the seconds that are remaining in the current file. Also, you'll note over here, there is a cancel button, and that is because in this case, we have 123 files added, and this whole process may take us quite a while. So if we get to the point that we don't want to continue this and we need a way to stop it, we just simply click the cancel button, and it cancels the file conversion. So those are the first series of things that I wanted to review with you. The next things that we need to talk about are down here in this bottom section of the user interface. And the first is the output format. In other words, you have a mixture of audio and or video files up here. You want to convert them to one of several different audio file formats. You select that format right here. Some of these formats do not require the selection of a bit rate and some of them do, like an MP3 or an AAC, for example. The second thing that you'll need to designate is the save to or the destination file location. This location is something that you can select using the browse button and you can change it to whatever you want. And the other thing that of course you can do is that if you go up to the options button there is a drop down functionality here and you can set the default paths here here and in this particular case this is, this is the destination path so you can set the destination path right here and when you set that path it will be the path that appears down here and again you can override that path at any time if you want to do it on a one-time basis by using the browse button the other options that you need to be aware of then are over here on the right hand side the, f the first of these is the output to same folder as source if you select this it really doesn't matter what you have here it will send the converted file to the same source folder and it will simply append copy 1, copy 2, copy 3, etc. to that file so it doesn't overwrite the existing file. So again when you check this box it overwrites or I shouldn't say overwrites but it overrides the particular designated folder location here. The other thing that you need to be aware of is this second button which is skip problem files and create a log. And this is especially important if you have a large number of files like I have here. Because what you might do is start the conversion process and then walk away because this could take you know, 10, 15 minutes given the fact that I have a hundred and some files queued up here. And what will happen is if Audio Switch encounters a problem, it's going to throw a dialog box up on the screen for you to see and it's going to ask for your input. And if you walk away and three seconds later an audio dialog pops up here it's going to wait for you and you're going to come back 15 minutes later expecting to have things done only to find out that it's still waiting for your input so if you select this skip problem files box what it does is that when it encounters a problem like that it will simply skip it but what it will do is log those issues or those problems and you can look at those at the completion of the conversion by simply going up here to the options button going to the view log file and it will open up that log file and it will show you the conversions that it's done and any problems that you see will also be um, recorded in here as well. So that's what that particular button is about. This last one we're going to talk about in a different section so we can skip that for now and that will conclude this video tutorial on the conversion or the converting buttons that are found on the main user interface these two buttons here and here thanks for watching